Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. I want to talk about one of my favorite techniques today and that's throwing a swim jig. This is a bait that I have won a lot of money on over the years. It's a bait that I have tied on year round. It is that good. It does not matter if you're talking cold water or the warmest part of the summer, a swim jig has a place in your boat. Now having said that, not all swim jigs are the same. And generally, that comes down to the trailer choice. Now, I've done videos in the past regarding different trailers to use on different types of jigs. Well, the swim jig trailer is one of the most important trailers that you can choose with any of the jigs that are out there. So I want to break down the four major types of trailers that I like to use. Uh, I'll give you the exact baits as well as the places and the times when I think these trailers shine on a swim jig. Before I get into that, I do want to remind you guys, though, that if you're looking for a little bit of help on your local lakes, check out the lake breakdowns that I've done through fishthemoment.com. I'll put the link in the video description for you. Also, if you're looking to support the channel and may need to buy some tackle, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link to make those purchases. You can bookmark that link, too, for future purchases as well. The little bit that I make from that comes right back to making content for you guys and is a great way to support the channel and very, very much appreciated. Okay, so let's get into the swim jigs. A swim jig, like I said, is one of the most versatile baits out there, and a lot of that comes down to the trailer. Depending on the technique and the pattern that you're running, the trailer is one of the most crucial parts to the swim jig, swim jig and is what makes the swim jig a good choice for that specific technique. Now, what I mean by that is, if you're throwing a swim jig and maybe you're doing the whole Alabama shake thing where you're twitching it, keep trying to keep it on the surface, it's a good way to fish it during, say, a shad spawn or if you're fishing real shallow grass. The whole idea there is you're twitching that, keeping it high up in the water column, and the fish are coming up and eating it basically off the surface. Pretty much every bite you get is a visual bite. And because of that, the trailer is huge for that choice. So when I'm doing the Alabama shake, I like to fish a trailer like this meaty chunk on here. This is basically just a classic pork frog style trailer. And the reason for that is simple. It's because it is such a flat surface bait, very wide that when you're shaking it, what that actually does is it helps keep your bait higher up in the water column. Meaning if you fished, say, a boot tail trailer and you were trying to do the Alabama shake, it would be harder for you to keep it up near the surface. So in that case, what you want is a trailer that has a wide surface area, big flat plane that will keep the bait up. So generally speaking, if I'm trying to keep my trailer way up near the surface, I'm doing the Alabama shake, fishing it through some shallow vegetation, maybe trying to mimic a shad spawn, generally a meaty chunk or a a pork frog style trailer, a chunk style trailer is one of your best options. So that's when I will throw a chunk style trailer. Now to me, one of the best all purpose trailers that I'm looking for is something like this Berkeley The Deal. This is just a three and a half inch size. That's the size that I, I do like. Uh, I will also throw the four and a half inch size if I'm looking for a little bit more bulk. But I like to throw a trailer that's got more of a shad profile with smaller kicking legs when I'm fishing clear water as well as less current. So this is one of my prime river swim jig trailers. And the reason has to do with the fact that I don't want big craw flappers that are going to, in current, grab the current and therefore get sucked into the cover more. I want my bait to swim more. And if I'm fishing really clear water, I don't need big flappers because those flappers are going to give off a lot of vibration. That's not necessary when you're talking about clear water. So I like a shad profiled trailer. In this case, you can see it's a little wider body, but thinner on top. So it does a good job at keeping my bait down as well because of that profile. And in clear water and in current, generally speaking, I want my bait to, to fall deeper. Meaning, you know, if I'm fishing really clear water, I would like my bait generally to run deeper. And by using a sleeker profiled bait, the bait will actually stay down deeper versus a flat style bait where my bait's going to want to rise just on the retrieve. 
So one of my favorite all-purpose ones is just a small shad profile bait with two smaller flappers that are still going to give off some vibration, but they're not so big that they're going to change the action of the bait. Now, if I'm looking for big flappers, like this pit boss that I put on the back, this is going to be something I'm going to throw in much dirtier water. So if I'm fishing generally muddy type conditions where a swim jig can still really excel, I do want something that's going to create a lot of motion, a lot of vibration, let the fish know that my bait is there. And that's what I'm going to go with something like this. Now, the one key with a with more of your cross style trailers, something that does have a lot more flapping motion, is generally speaking, the bodies have two different, you know, they've got a wide part, and then they've got a narrow part. Now, in this case, I've got this rigged where it's the flat side is down. Now, generally in muddy water, I'm fishing really shallow water, and therefore I probably want my trailer to be flat. But the thing is, I can easily change this and have it turn to the side, which gives me more of a natural bluegill profile, and it allows my bait to get a little bit deeper. So I will oftentimes change it from a horizontal plane to what I consider more of a perpendicular plane to the hook shank. That just has to do with how deep I'm fishing. The key here is I do want something that's got a little bit more mass, gives off more vibration than say something like this deal, and therefore it becomes more of a dirty water swim jig for me. So this is something I would throw when I'm talking about dirtier conditions where I've got visibility of about six inches or less. The last one is just your boots, boots, boot tail style trailer. This is a grass pig on the back. Uh, a reaction innovation uh, dipper is a great one to put on the back. Basically, you're talking about any of your boot tail swim baits that are a little bit thicker material, a little bit harder, so that they can withstand all of the fishing through heavy grass and wood, skipping around docks, wherever it is that you're fishing your swim jig. You know, you can put a Kitek trailer on the back, you can put a soft swim bait on the back, but generally they pull off more and you go through a lot more. And I don't think it's necessary. The other key there is a bait like the grass pig or a dipper gives your bait more side to side roll because the bait is stiffer, it's more rigid. If you use a Kitek, you generally don't get the roll out of your bait you just get your side to side motion out of the tail, but the bait is too soft to actually roll the bait back and forth. So I think if you talk to a lot of the best swim jig fishermen out there that like to throw boot tails, they gen generally don't go with a real soft plastic boot tail. It's something a little bit more rigid and stiffer like a grass pig or a skinny dipper. Those are two of the big favorites when it comes to that. But the key here is this does a great job at mimicking those fish that are keying in on bait fish. So if you're throwing a white one around shad or you're throwing one colored like this around bluegill, it's a very good bait if you're if you're trying to capture bass that are chasing or feeding on specific forage species that are not bottom related. So generally speaking in the muddy water situations, a lot of times I'm throwing something that I feel like is more of a craw imitator. In this case, this is going to be more of your perch, bluegill, shad imitator uh, and it, it works great. Now again, a boot tail is a great all-purpose trailer. You can fish it in most scenarios. Uh, again, this for me is a very good bait to, to fish in that mid-range watercolor. So, you know, anything from say a foot and a half, two foot of visibility to like three or four feet of visibility. Once I get clearer than that, I like to go with more of the deal style trailer. Once it's dirtier than that, I like to go more with my bigger cross style flappers. But those are the four main trailers that I use with my swim jigs. I think it makes a big difference in my success on the water uh, when I choose the proper trailer. Generally speaking, I don't think you're in the best case scenario if you were just going to take a chunk and throw this across the board every time you threw a swim jig. Just like I don't think if you threw a cross style, you'd be catching as many fish as you should be if you threw that all of the time. I think every one of these has a time and a place, and I think it really helps me with my success when fishing swim jigs. So hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know in the comment section, what are some of your favorite trailers 
or swim jigs? I'd love to know from you guys. I'm sure other viewers would as well. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, hit the like button. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.